All right, this little guy's crying has a cast fracture or toddler's fracture. All right. So it looks like we're just putting a cast on there. You want to talk a little bit about uh, what what we've got going on yeah, here? Yeah, so we've got a, a little kiddo that um, had a spiral fracture of his tibia, a toddler's fracture, and we're um, we're putting him in a long leg splint. Um, we usually put him in a long leg splinter cast and um, put him at 90 degrees at the knee um, just to ensure that he has no uh, ability to rotate at the, in the lower leg to prevent any rotational um, deformity that might occur, um, further rotational deformity. Um, we also put him in this because in, in about a week or so, once the bone gets sticky, he'll want to start walking on it, and this pretty much prevents him from being able to walk on it. Um, so the main thing when you put him on one of these long leg splints that I like to do is make sure that he's got a good supracondylar mold above the femur so it prevents the cast from the cast or splint from sliding down once once uh, he starts moving around a good bit. Okay. Now is he going to come back and we can get a full leg a full? So he'll come back and, and get a full leg uh, cast, long leg cast here in about uh, a week and uh, we, we monitor these closely for a couple of uh, weeks. Usually at his age, uh, they heal in about three to four weeks. Yeah. Um, but we, we do monitor them closely for the first couple of weeks to make sure there's no more uh, displacement of the fracture. So. Now, um, how often do you do you guys actually end up seeing the, the, the toddler's fracture or the cast fracture? I, I, I used to see a lot of them, and I haven't seen one they're, for years. They're, they're, uh, they, don't, they don't come around very often, that, that's for sure. I'm, yeah. You know, and, my couple of years, I've I've only seen maybe two in in two years, so it's yeah, uh, not it's, that often. Okay, because that was kind of my experience here in the ER. Because I've been in other places where um, I've seen quite regularly, would see them, right. and uh, and I didn't know whether it was just you know the population. But um, so the mechanism of entry with him was that he uh, was climbing up on a ladder of, or on a gate, and then uh, I think a sister pulled on him or or. Uh, somehow he came down fairly fast and fell, and um, we don't know exactly what his leg was doing, but he definitely got kind of a spiral right. fracture, a distal spiral fracture of the, of, of the tibia. Now, so it's a long bone spiral fracture. Um, we always worry about, as I was talking to the parents, you know, that's classically we talk about child abuse. Right on that, but um, as I was telling the parents, this is an exception to the rule, right. is that this is this is a well-known accidental spiral fracture of a long bone. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And just kind of a low energy, um, kind of rotational component that causes that spiral fracture to come up the mid shaft of the tibia, so. Yes, okay. Sir. But uh, yeah, this one, this one right here, certainly not a, any concern for any non-accidental trauma or anything, so. Mom, Dad, how old is he? He's two? Okay. And he's got no medical problems of any kind? All right. He's just kind of a rough and, rough and tumble little guy. Oh, yeah. Oh. He'll, be, he'll be getting around with this cast here in a couple days, though, once it's, once that bone starts feeling better. So. Yeah, he's had some pain medicines and all that, so he's just he's upset about that. He's tired. It's late at night, and he wants that IV out and wants to go home. Ready to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs>